Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Jake Makes. We are at part two of the weaponized gauntlet build, my collaboration with uh, Apocalypse Pyro. Oh, I keep wanting to say your old channel name. We're both building a weaponized gauntlet. Go check out his build in the link down below and right here. Made a sweet video about his. Go check that out. Subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. We're going to go ahead and finish up my build today, which is this thing. Wolverine Claw Metal Gauntlet. I'm super excited about it. It's going to be really great. Let's jump right in. All right, we've got our aluminum piece cut out now. To bend this, I'm going to do a trick I learned from ZNA Productions, which is for a piece of metal that's too big to stick into your vice jaws, you take some angle steel, a couple pieces, and you can stretch that out like this, stick it in the jaws of your vice, so that basically you can extend the jaws quite a ridiculous length. That's hot. It is already coffee time. In uh, when, when this video is all finished and edited together, it'll probably look like this took no time at all, which is extra deceiving because I wear the same clothes a number of days in a row. But in actuality, I've been working on this for like six days already. This is not an easy project. It's very complicated. Not to discourage you from doing it. It's a lot of fun. You should try it, but it is complicated. I feel like I was going to say something else. Yes, I've gone ahead and done some work on one of the finger plates. As you can see, I've got it riveted together. So I kind of figured out what I'm uh, going to be doing. You're going to want to take those roofing nails and cut them off just uh, long enough, as you can see, so they can uh, pass through all three layers of that metal and have a decent bit on the other end to peen over just like so. And then you don't want to peen them down all the way to where there's so, too much friction for the things to move. You want to make it to where they can still move pretty freely, but are still held together. As you can see, it looks really ugly, but I think it'll do the trick. Another thing to keep in mind that I didn't really think about before is for these to be able to bend easily or to be able to bend at all, the uh, nail holes really need to be exactly straight. If one hole is further up over here, another hole is farther down over here, it'll cause it to bind and it won't be able to bend. If I were a smarter person, I would figure out some sort of measurement. But since I'm just Jake, I'm going to eyeball it. Now that we got the fingers done, it's time to start working on the hand plates for the back of the hand and the wrist. I've decided I'm actually not going to be using these two pieces here, which were on the template. They look like this. Um, just not going to need them after all, so I'll discard those. These are the pieces we're going to be using. Roughly how it's going to go, just lay it on there. Okay, so first I'm going to attach these two plates together. I'm going to actually rivet these two together. I want them to move as one piece, and then we'll start attaching them to the glove. Bing bang! I'm going to go ahead and overlap these pieces about that much. That looks like half an inch. Then I'm going to take some of this leather I've got here. Go ahead and drill those two holes. Okay, so this plate right here is going to need to attach on the underside like this. The trick for attaching this is when you uh, close your hand like this and make a fist, you want it to be able to come down and cover your knuckles. But then when you extend your fingers, you want it to be able to pop up like that so you have more room for your fingers to come up. Otherwise, they'd be kind of stuck like that and that wouldn't be as good, right? 
So the trick is to attach this in a way that it's able to rock back and forth like that, but is uh, not able to move forward and backward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little strip of leather here, I'm going to bend it over like this, and attach it on the underside right there, rivet one side to that piece, the other side to the bottom of this piece. That should allow it to act as a bit of a hinge, to be able to pop up and pop down without moving forward and backward. Got what I'm saying? Another one of those uh, spike screws to attach this piece. We're gonna have two attachment points for each finger, one on top, one on bottom. Go ahead and lay that finger on top of your finger and uh, Make sure to push it up where it's exactly where it needs to be. Then just go ahead and take a Sharpie and mark through the holes in the middle right onto the glove. And you see we've got those three marks. A little hard to see on a black glove, but uh, I think you can see them. Then you just go ahead and punch those. And you got your three holes. Repeat that process a million times. To attach the back hand plates, we're going to attach them on two different points. Four points on the knuckle, and then I'm also going to put two more pins, one here, and then one here connecting it to the glove. Oh, this is so cool. All right, so the things left are I need to make the big blades and I need to get me some straps on the bottom. I believe I'm actually gonna have to go to the store first to get some more cutting blades for my angle grinder because I ran out. And while I'm out, I'll get some sodas to uh, test it on once it's finished. And I'm back, got some sodas, which will be fun and uh, Grinding wheel. Let's get to work. Give it the old file test. Oh, it worked, yes. It's not even touching it. For the straps, for the bracer, I'm going to be using these Velcro straps. I think Velcro is the way to go because it's completely adjustable and the Velcro is rock solid. It doesn't let go. So, I'll be using these.
actually got pretty good range of motion. I sure hope that looked good because now I'm all sticky and the gauntlet's all sticky and I've got a bunch of trash to clean up. That was a really terrible idea. <laughs> this was a super, super fun build. Oh my gosh. Really complicated, but oh, so much fun. I, I gotta say, I'm super, super proud of the result. There's nothing quite like having a gauntlet like this on your hand. Hearing the metal clink together. Oh. Oh, oh, it's too cool. This project, of course, was in collaboration with Apocalypse Pyro. Go check his channel out in the description down below. We both built a weaponized gauntlet. This is my version. I just gotta say, at the time of my filming this, like last week, we just hit 1,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. And I'm just so excited about that. I have so many ideas going forward for new projects and stuff that I'm going to be doing and so great to have that many people following along to watch, watching these videos every time they come out so awesome thank you so much guys I really do appreciate it that's about all I got to say for this build thanks so much be sure to subscribe if you haven't already I'll catch you on the next episode Jake out